I love living in Manitoba. This province has these great big prairie skies and so many animals to go and find. It's perfect for a wildlife artist looking for inspiration. This winter, I've got a great idea for a painting. And in this particular idea, I'm looking for one of the most beautiful birds you can find on this cold landscape. It could be a challenge to find. And I know that the cold and the wind won't make it easy. But I know my idea is out there. And I hope I find the inspiration I'm looking for. When you're young and interested in doing any form of art, I think you'll naturally draw or paint or create the thing that interests you the most. And for me, that was always animals. I had books about animals and I would go to the library and rent animal books and draw from them and I remember having a large collection of National Geographics and sometimes when there was an article about animals in one of those magazines, I would use those pictures as reference for my art. Then as I got a little bit older, I discovered a book that became probably one of the most influential books uh, for me as a young artist, and that was this one right here. For the first while, I would just rent it from the library and flip through it page after page, just looking at every single image closely. Here was an artist doing paintings of the things that I was interested in the most. Animals in nature. And really, after discovering this book, it just became one of the most influential things for me as a young artist. They were just so accurate and so lifelike and so realistic. I was just amazed at everything that I was seeing. And I just remember having my face pressed against each page, studying every little detail, and looking at every single painting really closely. I wanted to be able to create paintings just like this, of the things that I was the most interested in. Animals in their natural environment.
Then a few years goes by and I'm working on my animal drawings and my paintings and I'm trying to replicate some of the things that I saw in Robert Bateman's book and an opportunity comes up uh, for me to meet him and he's coming to Winnipeg and I can go and get my book signed and see some of his work in person. Um, but most importantly, I wanted to show him some of the paintings that I'd been working on uh, at that time and maybe get his opinion and, and see if he has any pointers for me and things that he might have an idea of that I could use in my artwork. So I get to the show and I get my book signed and I get to ask him a couple questions and I specifically remember bringing this painting here and showing it to him. So I remember showing him the painting and he looked at it closely and he gave me a couple of nice compliments and and I remember him asking me about this particular part in the painting saying, did you make that up? And I said, yes, actually I did make that up. How did you know I made that up? And he had said, well, it doesn't look very natural. It doesn't look like how it would out in nature. And I remember being amazed by that. How could he tell that I had made that up? And he asked me after that, you know, do I have a camera? And I said, yes, actually, I just recently gotten a camera. And back then, the idea of getting my own photo reference didn't really come into mind. I had all my animal books and I had my National Geographics and that's what I would use. I would take pictures and I always enjoyed going out into nature, but I had never thought about going out and taking my own reference photos. So he said to me, you know, I'd, I'd like you to take your camera and go out into nature as a bit of an art project, a bit of an assignment to go out and take a photograph of something that you like, something that you see in nature that you like and draw or paint it exactly as you see it. And so I did that and I took that advice and I took everything he had said to me and I went out into nature and started photographing some of the things that I had seen. So now this part of my process, going out into nature, taking my own photos, has become one of the most important parts of my artistic process. I love being able to get out into nature and to see these animals, take my own pictures and bring everything back and turn it into a piece of art. There's something great about being able to see something in person and have that emotion and pour that emotion and that experience into the painting that I'm working on. And so that's where this painting is gonna begin. It's gonna begin with me going out into nature, trying to find this wild animal and trying to have that unique experience that's gonna inspire a unique piece of art. I'm hoping to be able to take that emotion that I'm going to have from seeing this wild animal and pour that into this piece of art to really try and capture the essence of what was going on at the time that I saw the owl. So now the only thing left to do is to go out into nature and find the inspiration that I'm looking for. It is an absolutely amazing day out here. And this is why I love Manitoba. You can just see so far and on such a sunny day like this, I should be able to see the snowy owls pretty clearly because they'll contrast with that nice bright blue sky. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the snowy owls just up on, on the power poles and I'll just keep my eyes open and, and keep driving down the highway. I might have to go quite a ways, but I'll just uh, keep driving and enjoy this day.
Okay, so I think I've I've got one, but it's pretty far away. I just want to make sure that it actually is one, so I'm just going to stop and take a look with the binoculars. Oh yeah, I think that is one. I'm just going to double check, make sure. Oh yeah, that is one. Okay, that's good. Um, now I'll just need to decide what to do. Okay, so the only thing I want to think about before I try and get closer is that I don't want to get too close because I don't want to scare it away. I kind of want it to feel comfortable with me. And so I'll just, I'll start by being pretty far away from it and then I'll see if I can get closer and I'll kind of read the owl's body language just to just to make sure that I'm not getting too close because I don't want it to fly away. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start slowly trying to get a bit closer here. Okay, so I'm just going to turn down this road here. The owl is on this second pole here, so I'm going to drive past it. And then I'm going to stop. Okay. I'll maybe stop like another pole and a half away. Check them here. Okay, good. It's still there. Okay. I think it's okay with me. Good, good. Okay, so I'm outside now and I've got this owl here. It seems comfortable with me. I'm pretty far away and it seems kind of puffed up. So I know it's, I know it's uh, pretty comfortable with me. So I'm just gonna stay here for a while, photograph it, and then maybe after a little while, I'll move on and try and find another. Okay, this is absolutely amazing. And I've sat here maybe about 
45 minutes and just watch this owl and just let it get comfortable and and uh, I think I'm gonna leave it alone now and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna look for some other ones. Okay, that was great. That owl was really comfortable. It stayed there long enough for me to get some good pictures. And uh, I think what I got is pretty good. I'm amazed these owls can stay out there like that in this wind. It's, it's very, very cold. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna keep driving and I'm gonna see if I can find uh, another owl to get some pictures or just get another inspiration or, or a good idea and uh, yeah I'm gonna get to start driving I think I'm just gonna head back down the way I came. I saw a really good spot where there might be some now, so I'm just gonna head back that way and, and see if there's anything there. It's already starting to get late in the day and the sun's getting at that low angle. So I just wanna see if I can see one or two more before the sun goes down. Oh yeah, okay. I think I see one here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. It's just down this road here. On that power line there. quick look here and see oh yeah that's a nice looking one it's got these black spots on it on the wings oh that's perfect okay so it kind of looks like it's it's sort of hunting or it's in like a hunting mode so I might be able to get a bit closer I'm still gonna gauge the body language of the owl make sure I'm not uh, getting too close to it and making it too uncomfortable so it flies away so I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'll drive past it and stop maybe a little bit closer this time and see if I can get some great photos of this bird. Okay, and I'm just gonna hop out and see if I can get some great photos and some great inspiration for this painting of a snowy owl that I wanna do.
That was simply amazing. And it has been a wonderful day looking for these owls out on the prairies. Just soaking in this amazing landscape and nature and seeing these beautiful birds and, and being inspired. And, you know, as I've been out here all day, um, the inspiration I was looking for, I think I got, but I also got something else. I'm inspired by the resilience of these birds. You know, it's been cold and windy for me all day, and yet they're out here every day, surviving and living on this landscape. And so I think when I go and do my painting, I really want to convey that energy about these birds in this particular picture. This landscape can be so harsh in the middle of the winter, and yet here they are, out here, every day. They survive, and they thrive. It's been quite a while since I saw that snowy owl that I want to put in this painting. About six or seven months now. In fact, it's the middle of the summer by the time I'm starting this painting. I don't mind having that much time pass between getting an idea or having an inspiration and then putting a painting together. I think it's good to have that time for the idea to sort of really develop in my mind and to really turn into something great rather than just seeing something right away and painting an idea that hasn't had time to fully form in my head. And what I had originally thought for this painting was simply the idea of a bright white snowy owl in evening sunlight against that really great crisp blue winter sky, the really great blue winter skies that we get here in Manitoba. And so that was my initial thought and my initial idea. And it was good to be able to have that kind of time to really think about it and put it together because what I'm gonna paint now, especially with the time that I've taken to think about it and really form this idea, is gonna turn out really great and, and hopefully be exactly that kind of 
feel, that cold winter feel with that bright white snowy owl against that blue sky. I'm really hoping to just capture that exact same feeling of the day when I saw this bird. So the planning stage of this painting is really important. I really want to take my time with it to make sure that every element in this piece is balanced with the other and nothing is too dominant or taking over too much that distracts from the overall picture. I really want a nice cohesive painting that's going to make sense um, not only as a, as a picture and as a piece of art but also naturally of, of how you would actually see it out in the wild. So when I'm ready to start painting the thing that's going to figure the most prominent in this particular piece is going to be the sky. In fact, I'm making the sky two-thirds of the painting. It's going to be covered by this big tree and by the owl, but the top two-thirds of the painting is going to be this blue sky that you see in the winter. And so once I start mixing my paint and I start getting everything ready for that, this blue color, this mixture of this blue color is going to be really important to get. And what's going to be the most challenging about it is, is that the blue is this gradient from this dark purplish blue to this very light, almost greenish color down at the horizon. And so this process, this part of the painting, takes quite a long time and in fact blending these colors together especially blending acrylics because they dry so quickly just takes a lot of time a lot of patience a lot of layers many different colors of blue mixed together and the thing that I do mostly to get the colors of the blue to blend together into this nice gradient is I do a lot of dry brushing. And the dry brushing is incredibly subtle and it's incredibly soft and it's very time consuming. But in the end it's very worth it because I get that look that I want and especially if I've made a mistake or something doesn't look quite right, I can go back and fix it and continue on moving forward uh, with the next parts of the painting. Something that I don't often think about while I'm doing a painting but seems to be one of the more important parts is having the patience to see it through. It can often be difficult sometimes when an entire day's worth of work means I only accomplish one layer across the entire painting or one tiny element that doesn't necessarily add to the whole piece in the moment but will when the painting is done. And so having lots of patience, waiting to be able to see it through to the end and continue working and adding layer after layer is an important part of the painting. It's an important part of, of being able to create this. And so when I'm trying to, to work on this idea and bring this idea to life, I, I don't want to rush anything. And I want to make sure that I pay attention to each element in the painting and that I'm, I'm really taking my time with each part because each part is going to be, play an important role in bringing together the entire painting. Originally I didn't know exactly what I wanted to have the owl sitting on. I wanted the owl to be sitting higher up because they like to be higher up so they can see all, all around them and see their prey while they're hunting. And as well, you know, in the painting, to really capture that idea that I had, if it was sitting higher up, it would really be against that nice blue sky. And so I didn't quite know at the time what I wanted it to be sitting on. I thought maybe, you know, some kind of tree, but I really wanted something with a lot of character and a lot of interesting shapes, and especially a lot of interesting shapes that would play well against that blue sky. And so sifting through some pictures that I had had of other broken trees and fallen trees in other places, I found this particular one that I really liked, and I moved a few of the branches around just because I, I liked you know, some of the particular shapes and I put it all together and that's where this tree came from, this idea of this really great sort of 
broken tree with a lot of unique sort of branches that are all kind of draping over with this owl just perched really high up against the blue sky, that evening sun really just lighting that one half of its body and just brightening those white feathers and those black spots just standing out and really trying to get that overall feel of that cold winter day. So I actually got to a point in the painting right about now where I got quite discouraged. I think, you know, I felt like I had done everything correctly and I felt like I had gone through my idea incredibly well and I had taken the time and I had been really patient with working it up and, and painting it really well. And even though I'd had all the light on the tree, it just, something just didn't feel right about it. and. You know, I wanted to stick to my idea and I wanted to, to see it through to the end and something about the light on the tree or the color of the tree or some of the shadows just didn't feel quite right and I'm not sure what it was. I think a lot of times in my art or in some of my paintings I, I, I reach this stage where I'm looking at it and something about it just doesn't look right but I, I know I'm on the right track and I think if I just stick with it and I just work through some of these difficult parts, the parts where I feel like it's just something isn't right and it's just not working, you know, um, it's, it's good to just push through some of those barriers and, and keep moving forward. And so that's what I've done here and I just, I just keep moving forward and I keep pressing on and keep adding things and, and standing back, assessing the painting, looking at what I've done. In these instances when things aren't always going exactly as planned and you hit a bit of a rough spot in the work, it's all too easy to become to become fairly critical of what's going on. And I think if anyone's going to be the biggest critic of my own work, it's definitely going to be myself, especially while I'm working on it and especially if things aren't going exactly as I planned. But in some ways, I think being very critical and analytical about my work has made me a better artist. As long as I don't take it too far and I remind myself that it's okay for there to be things that aren't perfect and that perfection isn't exactly what I'm striving for. I'm striving for a scene and I'm striving to capture something natural and to capture this amazing experience that I had seeing this snowy owl. So in the end, I'm glad I stuck with it and I'm glad I kept pressing on and pushing through and, and making adjustments and standing back and, and just taking my time with it because once I start to add the owl and once I start to really put the most important element in this picture, this snowy owl, all the things in the painting really start to come together and it starts to become alive. And so this is often my favorite part, is painting the animal. And I usually leave the animal for last because you're adding that life to the painting and, and adding that wild animal really brings the whole thing together and it really just breathes life into the picture. As an artist, this is the experience that I'm after. I truly love seeing these wild animals in nature. And it's always amazing having them allow me into their world, even for just a short time. To see them and to be inspired by them. It's this inspiration that I want to put into my work. It's about having those moments, that unique encounter with the snowy owl, and to bring it to life in my paintings.